What's up, Fight Fans, and welcome back to another Vegas Odds Breakdown here on the Vegas Odds YouTube channel. I am your host, the Fight Fans, Gary Kerman. With me, as always, my man, Joe Danger himself, Jesse Hobson. What's up, man? How's it going? Hanging out. You know, like I said in the last video, you you were there, Gary. My I back, so. My back is hurting from carrying this show, but it's it's no biggie. I'm here all week. Hi, haters. See you next week as well. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad that you're carrying the show for us this week, but, you know, God, cause, you know, <laughs> since I've been doing that every other week prior <laughs> you know sometimes you kind of you know it's a it's a give and take type of thing you know i'm glad you're here i'm glad you're you know you're helping out with the show a little bit just a little bit just a smidge you know that's what that's what you're here for right gotta earn my keep yeah i think so i think so but on tap for this week we got lfa 145 live on ufc five pass i think believe 9 p.m eastern standard time i think it's a decent fight card we have bruno assis and jesse murray i believe for the middleweight championship so yeah let's get right down to it let's Starting the let's start right at the top. Our first fight is going to be yep. Like I, no, actually, this is in the light heavyweight division. Sorry, guys. Right now, Bruno C is taking on Jesse Murray for the main event of this fight card. It's actually a light heavyweight, but Bruno. The, the reason why I thought it was at middleweight because Bruno C is actually is a former middleweight. So we'll see what happens here. But right now, the line is set at minus two thirty five for a C's and the comeback on Murray plus two hundred. Who do you got? Yeah, you know I really want to be excited about this fight but we have two guys with with absolutely no chins bruno assist you know he lost to ozzy diaz and andre munez uh you know while jesse murray he lost to Cayo uh baraljo who we will see oh uh, yeah i'm not i'm not uh i don't speak portuguese i took <laughs> i took eight years of spanish i took zero years of portuguese but uh <laughs> but i mean who we will see fighting uh you know on saturday you know murray i i watched i went back and watched tape for this one yeah Yes, I did. Uh, you know, Murray is is pretty slow. Like I was, I was kind of surprised. Like I knew he was slower, but I think that that might be why he lost or was handled the way he was against Kayo. And uh, you know, Bruno Assis. You know, I thought he looked he looked decent against Munez, but that was also a while ago. Assis, he should win this one. He's the better fighter of the two, but either of these guys could get caught. I like Assis by KO, but I, the the odds are a little chalky for me. So ultimately, I'm probably just gonna sit this one out and hope for the best yeah i'm not fond of either one of these two <laughs> at all um i think it is probably the better prospect of the two he's definitely fought the way better competition he's definitely way more experienced as well i think he's got more tools in the shed but with that said he's been knocked out he's been finished he's slow as molasses just like his opponent uh, i think it's going to give you a slow slug that's standing these guys are just going to stand in the middle and kind of trade it out and see whoever falls falls first. Um, and I think it's going to be Jesse Murray. I mean, other than Kyle Bahio, this is probably his best opponent for Murray, yeah. you know, and I don't think he's going to get the dub here. I think, Assis gets back on track. And I, I and I think honestly, Murray is one of the lesser competition that he's faced. So I'm I'm taking Assis to win. Not extremely confident, nor am I betting it, but Assis probably gets the job done. Yeah, I would say if you're betting either one of these guys, take them by KO or inside the distance. Or the under. Who knows? Yeah, or the under. But I mean, but if you have to take a fighter, take him to win. I I wouldn't count on this one going to the decision. All right. In our co-main event, we got a fight between Olivia B B Scow and Jen. Bishop right now in line Bishop minus 650 and uh oh, Olivia because I'm not I'm not saying that last name at plus 475 who do you got you know Biscow I think that's how you'd say it Bishop Bishop or Bishop now you got me all tongue-tied Bishop has uh beat some decent competition and when Olivia fought someone that was worth a shit she ended up losing via decision personally I think this is a setup fight for Bishop to win because she's cute and marketable if you go look at her uh sure dog photo I mean she's an attractive young lady I think she gets it done via sub that's that's really all there is to it she's she's the better fighter she's cute she's marketable and this is a layup yeah they're that's exactly what they're doing I mean she, there's a flyway fight they're trying to promote her she's three and oh she's 36 years old which is kind of insane for someone to be a minus 650 favorite at 36 years old and only 30 no but as you can see she's got a tap topology picture of her in a gi so yeah. you're you already know what they're trying to do here she's a black belt i think or is that a blue belt i can't see i'm blind as shit it looks blue with a red stripe right? yeah I can't really uh, tell either. I don't know. Normally, normally on LFA, if you see a female with a gi on and a belt, you're going to want to side with her because most likely she's finally going to get the sub. And I feel her opponent 
somehow is one and one, but is four and one in our last five fights. But <laughs> but yeah, I, I think Bishop goes in there, gets the job done, gets the sub, makes it e- look easy, probably in round one. I'm not even going to pay too much attention to this fight because there's not much to really make on this fight, especially at Bishop at minus 650, which is kind of insane. So yeah. Next up, we got a fight between Tyus White and Miguel Sanson. These two kids, they look like kids. I mean, we're talking like these look like 15 year olds. Oh, wow. Okay. They, this is in the flyweight division. And right now this line is set at minus 180 for Sanson to come back on White plus 155. Yeah. Yeah. White especially looks like a kid that would like steal your shoes or something. Oh, like, oh yeah, for sure. He's stealing your backpack right out of yeah. school. <laughs> okay, he's like, no. All right. You don't have lunch money. I'll take your shoes. <laughs> yeah. So this one, actually, I think this has a lot of potential to be a really fun fight this will probably be actually the fight of the night if probably that that's if the main event doesn't deliver which like we said it will probably yeah <laughs> it will <laughs> yeah you know uh sanson is the better fighter here he has the higher ceiling he has more tools in his toolkit while white isn't bad per se but he isn't really great either only two of the la- of of the last six on his record were decent fighters and his sole loss comes at the hands of a midget that's uh who who was it it's a uh, TJ Laramie's brother, who oh, is Tony, Tony Laramie. Yeah, he's even smaller than yeah. TJ Laramie, and he's funny to look at. Like, I feel like he's gonna give me a like a candy cane or something. Sanson should push the pace, stay composed, and eventually find the chin. I like Miguel Sanson via KO. Yeah, t- yeah. Me- Tony, Tony looks like he's a Santa helper. I thought you were gonna click it. <laughs> oh, you want You want? You want to yeah. take a look at Tony, Tony yeah, Laramie? I, right. Dude, I can't wait till these. If I ever get famous, they're gonna they're gonna look me up and be like, dude, this guy's a prick. Yeah, bro. He like, <laughs> He, he he smuggles he's candy five, canes. And he's five foot two. Wow. Look yeah, at that. Tony Larry. But he's a number one flyweight in Canada. So we got to give him some props there a little bit. I mean, if you're fighting elves, how are you going to not be the number one guy? So. Well, I mean, he he <laughs> beat he, he beat Tyus White, who's seven inches taller than him somehow. I don't know. But as far as this fight goes, I, I'm probably going to have to side with, with what you got going on here. Uh, Sanson looked like a well-rounded fighter from from what I've seen. Um, it does, neither one of these guys really fought great competition. Uh, you're talking about Sanson. He split decision over a two-and-one opponent. You know, he, he actually won his last fight due to a shoulder injury for his opponent you know it's it's not really good when you're betting on a guy he's winning a split decision he wins another fight uh due to an injury never good there um and Tyrus white like you said i mean he's he's beaten not great competition and he lost to tony laramie who he was seven inches taller than <laughs> i feel i feel like i have to side with sanson just because of that terror tony laramie loss that's pretty pretty telling there but i feel like this could be a fun fight because these two guys uh i feel like it's gonna be they're gonna scrap it out i think there's gonna be some grappling exchanges there's gonna be a, a ton of scrambles on the map because if you've seen Tyrus white majority of his wins are by submission so you know he's gonna want to take it to the mat and i'm, I'm actually looking forward to this one i think it's gonna be a high paced uh high paced fight between these two but i'm taking uh sanson as the side here all right moving on we got a fight in the winner, winner, division. winner gets my lunch money yeah mind you they're 25 and 23 years old that's crazy but they look like they're like 15 16 years old yeah. so Thir- 13th grade 13th grade <laughs> we got keegan gen genrich genrich and jake krasrotsky jesus christ come on guys what the hell is he <laughs> right now jake is plus 150 and keegan minus 175 what do you got while keegan does have a few losses on his record uh they didn't come at the hands of slouches why what i like about keegan is he's always looking to get better and while i do think keegan is the better of the two fighters i think jake is good competition he has some questionable losses but he's improved since losing to a one and oh fighter still though i think keegan will use his high end reach and tap his way to a decision here he will fight at range he will win this fight i like keegan genrich via decision yeah i mean it, it, on paper this should be a good fight they're coming out of dc camps both of them you got kazrowski coming out of rufus sport keegan gunrich i don't know grappling club maybe that's a decent one who knows but at least one of them <laughs> one of the two is coming out of de- decent camp uh but gunrich is pretty freaking massive for lightweight six foot two with a 75 inch reach that's pretty freaking tall but then jake on the other hand he's, he's six feet tall as well but he's 31 years old five and two this is kind of when you're supposed to get into your prime he's coming off a loss where he got choked out by Lucas Clay, who I think is nephews of Cassius Clay, if I'm not mistaken. Muhammad Ali? Muhammad Ali, yes. Yes, brain farts all day today. Interesting. Uh, Had a long day. But uh, yeah, that's uh, no fault there because Lucas Clay is actually 
a Deez fighter. I've seen him fight before, even though he's coming off a you know a completely dominant loss in his last fight. But um, and then he also got knocked out by some guy named Eugene Aubrey, who was only one to know it. So I might have to go with you and take Keegan Ginrich in this one. I'm, I'm not keen to to laying any type of juice here. So minus 175. I'm probably gonna have to pass at that on on that one. Ultimately, I think Ginrich get, gets the job done. Minus 175 is not. It's not too bad if you want to pay a little bit. I, I I think he's fought the better competition. I think he's going to utilize his height, his reach advantages, and, and get the job done via decision, just like you said. So yeah, I mean, you could easily uh, parlay Ginrich, uh, Sanson, and if you wanted to make a little extra dollar, Bishop, if he wanted to. That's what I did earlier in the week uh, because those odds were a little bit better for each and every one of those fighters. It's plus one eighty two right now, which is not terrible. Almost two to one odds yeah, on those uh, three on those three favorites. Not bad at all all right our last fight up uh, which is the very first fight on the may card is a fight between scott ritz and craig fruth in the welterweight division right now the line is set at ritz is minus 205 to come back on fruit plus 175 i think it's for i don't fucking know yeah so this one garrett i didn't actually break down on paper so let's take a look at it together shall we, <laughs> shall uh, we? <laughs> well the one guy you know he's 29 that stands out and he's taller so and he's from wisconsin so you know they have nothing else going on there i mean the other guy lives <laughs> in indiana i mean usually they play basketball up there but you know he has he's on a three fight win streak i think i'm gonna have to side with him just because he's taller he's a rangier fighter he's on a three fight win streak and like i said he has nothing going on in wisconsin except for eating cheese and doing mma that i mean that guy looks like he's built you know that looks like a little uh what do you call it a little tinder action photo there so i Definitely mean is. he might be trying to prove something to his family all these guys are just lo- losing to lucas clay over here, i saw that i saw that <laughs> everybody's just losing to lucas clay and and by choke, mind you, you know how crazy it is? If he is the nephew of Muhammad Ali, this man is a jujitsu fighter, not even a striker. We would just well, what's weird that. is the, the last the last one was in round two, and this one's in round three. Mini Cassius Clay over here is just playing with his food, I guess, until he gets like 10, min- 10 minutes in, 15 minutes in. I don't know. Who's, I, the, fa- who's the favorite? The favorite is uh, Ritz at minus 205. Is that Tinder or is that the uh, not, not, boy? Not, yeah, mo- <laughs> it's not it's not Tinder boy. It's, Let's put that way. Yeah, I think it's Milwaukee. I think that I think he's gonna win, man. Just because, like I said, there's nothing going on in, in Wisconsin. And he I also has to think prove... he's he's fought the better competition too on paper. Other than Lucas Clay, I mean, um, this this dude's definitely fought the better competition. Riding three fight win streak. Every one of his wins have come inside the distance, so he's finishing his opponents. That's what you really want when you're betting on fighters on the regional scene. You want to bet on guys that are finishing their opponents, especially bum opponents, guys that shouldn't be at the UFC level. So if they're finishing those guys, you know the that I feel like that would be more the the right side to go. I'm not. I'm going on and living here. I'm taking Scott Ritz as well. I'm not putting too much stock into it, but yeah, I think he gets the job done. Like this is this is the card. I'm not like too like keen on. You know, it's not a fight card I want to go and throw a ton of money on. Like last week, last week's card was phenomenal. So it's kind of expected to have kind of a dud after such a great card that we had last week. Mind you, for the haters out there telling us, oh, you're not picking any underdogs. Why in God's green earth? Earth, what I pick an underdog that's going to lose. I'm trying hey, to figure this out, guys. I Why have, are we picking picking dogs that will lose here? I, I do have an underdog for you, though, and the reason why I didn't break down that last weird fight uh, because your boy is going to make all the bar flies in Wisconsin happy is because they did announce Melquizola, Melquizola Costa versus William Starks, and I don't, I just don't think it's been added here yet. And uh, for those that are worried, no, about, it's uh, canceled. Oh, that one got canceled too yeah well in that one i had i did have i did starts. have the underdog i had costa in that one because nice. i because starks he pulled a stunt last time and it's hard to trust him so i fe- i felt like costa was decent enough to get it done so so there you go haters sorry That's not my fault insane. this time yeah and mind you guess what happened last week uh all favorites win five and oh yep. five and yep. oh imagine if we picked an underdog which we did i picked one I'm not going to say I didn't. I picked one underdog in the main event. Didn't work out. But what if we picked other underdogs? We would have lost. So think about that, guys. I'm not picking underdogs just, just to make you guys happy. I'm here to make you guys money. Not make you well, happy, make you money. Who was the, the Asian kid? We we both picked him, and he was the underdog when we when we picked him. He was the right. favorite come to, to come fight time, but he was the underdog going into the into the week. Or oh, into the you, you, Yuma Horiuchi. Uh, if you guys are following along at home, I know I know your haters are. I have two parlays that have been have both worked out 
two weeks in yep. a row. And I and if you were listening closely, I gave out another parlay in this one. And yep, if so. you follow our Twitters, Joel underscore danger, you will see I, I will post that one on there as well. Follow us, subscribe to the Vegas Odds YouTube channel. We will be back next week for some more breakdowns, some more money. 